You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Hey guys, Ballistic Coffee Boy here. So a really cool unboxing for you tonight. Now, um, this is a box from Atari. Uh, I did just open it when I got here to check that it was what they said it was. Um, so I'm really excited to share this with you. Now, um, this was uh, sent in by a really cool viewer of the show. Um, they asked me not to say who they were, um, so I'm not. But um, they said I could unbox this. And let me just say, I'm so thrilled. Now, there were only 45 of these made available recently in the whole world after it was first made available and it sold out by Atari and um, they're basically unreleased games that never came out um, through Atari XP so I'm so excited to show you Yara's Return the Atari XP cartridge I'm gonna be unboxing these and I can't freaking wait um, we got Saboteur by Howard Scott Warshaw as well one of my favorites can't wait and we got Aquaventure, um, the cool um, underwater, uh, just, you know, feast of a game, I guess you'd say. Um, but these games, um, this set here was like $450, I believe, recently. These come with the lit up marquees, they come with all the goodies, the patches. Um, so I'm going to take a look at these with you and maybe even play some of the real games. Um, and um, so come on back, get your Java. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back guys. So I decided to do this series in three parts so I could feature um, each game um, for at least 30 minutes because there's a lot of history with these three games. There is a lot I want to go over with these games that I can't get across in one episode. So I'm going to do these in order. I noticed the sides of these have one, two, and three. So Saboteur, uh, or Saboteur as one might call it. Um, I don't know why I say Saboteur. <laughs> it's Saboteur. Um, but this game um, is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it was uh, developed by Howard Scott Warshaw, as many of you know. There's also uh, a trailer I noticed that Atari had um, put out, and Limited Run Games actually um, had that out on their YouTube page. So let's take a look at that trailer real quick for this game. So cool. I love it. 
um, I'm excited to rip into this thing for sure. So um, let's go and have a look on Tari's website. And it talks a little bit about this game. It says, uh, each limited edition cartridge comes sealed with a high quality box, 2600 game cartridge with custom paint and LED top, premium card stock poster, extended instructional manual with bonus material, hard enamel collectible pen, polyester blend, twill woven embroidered collectible patch, certificate of authenticity, and digital copy of the game playable on the Atari VCS. Pretty cool. Um, it says here, developed by Atari, published by Atari Inc., designer Howard Scott Warshaw, platform Atari 2600, and mode is single player. So, um, this is definitely, as I said, one of my favorite games. Um, it was not released at the time by Atari. Um, and it's a shame. It's a really good game. Uh, now, this game did turn up years later on Atari Flashbacks and so on, and that's where I first played it. Um, but um, it's definitely, you know, uh, a really cool game. I love it. Um, so this game is also on Atari Age here. Uh, I'm looking. And um, it's talking about uh, Jerome Domerat did the graphics, and it was programmed by Howard Scott Warshaw. Um, and just looking here... Um, it says Saboteur is an enjoyable multi-level shooter written by Howard Scott Warshaw, the Atari programmer designer responsible for Yars Revenge, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and E.T. Saboteur was never released by Atari and at some point was modified to be released as a game based on the A-Team. Um, and that's what I wanted to say. I tried to explain that to someone recently and I forgot. Um, there is an Atari 2600 game, the A-Team, like the 80s TV show with Mr. T and all that. And it's just like this game. And I remember hearing that and playing at night, and I own it. And it, I think I own it. And Or no, I, I'm sorry. I played it on, um, I played it in emulation. And I was like, that that reminds me of Saboteur. So the games are very similar. Um, pretty, like, very similar. So just FYI. So um, I'm so excited to uh, dig into this game. Now, these are sealed cartridges, as you know. Um, this has never been opened. Um, this was first released. Um, these were $149.99 on Atari.com. And uh, they were out in the summer of 2022. And they were just, they uh, released 45 of these sets, these three sets, like I showed you S Saboteur, Aqua Venture, and Yars Return. They released those um, about a month ago, like in March 2023. They put 45 up on their website um, worldwide. So they had no more. Um, of these just the 45 so i guess so um i'm so excited to open this this is one of my favorite games for sure um it's so fun i love it let me just read the back of it to you here first it says strange aliens are using a distant planet as a launch base for a galaxy crushing weapon they thought this serene world would offer no resistance to their insidious schemes prove them wrong by jumping into the steel and skin of the cybernetic hotot race through their base and destroy it to eliminate the cosmic threat. Credits Howard Scott Warshaw, Dennis Debro, Kurt Vendell. This limited edition includes a newly manufactured Atari 2600 cartridge with custom artwork and an acrylic top that lights up when being played. An 11 by 17 premium cardstock glass aqueous quarter fold poster, an extended instructional manual with bonus material, a hard enamel collectible pen with black nickel plating, a polyester blend, twill woven embroidered collectible patch, a certificate of authenticity, and a digital copy of the game playable on the Atari VCS. And I just say Atari XP down here, which is the their, um, their kind of branch of Atari that puts these out. And 2022 Atari Interactive Inc. Printed in the USA, I love to see that. So it does say number one up here in that series of three. So I just love this cover. I love the the color that color red is particularly my favorite, as you can tell. Um, I, I freaking love it. And here's the uh, kind of the mascot of the game or whatever. So Howard Scott Warshaw was definitely an ingenious uh, designer and programmer. Um, he created a world with this game, such as Yars Yars Revenge and Saboteur, and also Yars Return. 
And he really wanted to build upon that and put more games out in that Yars universe, as it was, from what I remember reading. And um, these are just some really cool games. I really enjoy them. Uh, Saboteur is one of my favorites for the Atari 2600. So I'm privileged to be able to open this with you. Um, and I, I appreciate um, our uh, viewer that uh, sent this out to me for sure. Um, I just can't wait to open this thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's crack the seal, as it were, um, as my friends uh, Steve and Jeff Fulton say on Into the Vertical Blank. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and get this open. So I'm going to be very careful because this is not mine. And I do have to return it. And I just wanted to say, um, you know who you are. I appreciate you so much for letting me unbox these with everyone and go over these. And I'm so excited and I feel honored, I really do. Um, I appreciate it so much. This was sent in uh, by a friend of the show, as I said, and he ordered these. And he said I could um, unbox these on the show and talk about them. And uh, you know who you are, thank you so much. So I'm gonna be really careful when I open this. So I'm actually, I'm so excited to get into this here and see, I don't wanna bend anything though if I don't have to. You know, obviously. Let's see. Let me see which way is the best to open this. Okay, the top opens. Very cool. So I am so excited. Look at this. Wow. This is so neat. Let's see. Wow. Look at this. This is so rad, you guys. Wow. That is just that image. It's kind of like. I don't know, it jumps out at you. It's got a texture to it, it's almost 3D. I can't believe the top lights up when you plug it in. Um, these are really custom made and made really well, I have to say. <laughs> it even smells brand new. Um, so these are so cool. Um, I've never seen or held one of these before. It looks just like a 2600 cartridge otherwise. That image is just incredible. I love that. It is really, it seems like it's painted on. So that is so neat. Uh, let's go ahead and look in here. I see a patch and stuff down there. Let's go ahead and get that patch out. So here's the embroidered patch. The Atari Alien Defense Squad. Look at that. Wow. That's so neat. That's so neat. I love that. I love that patch. It, it's so colorful. Um, let's go ahead and get in here. And we have a Certificate of Authenticity for Saboteur, limited edition. Atari XP and Atari Interactive are proud to present Saboteur, an authentic and officially licensed video game cartridge for the Atari 2600 console. This certificate guarantees that the item contained within is an original limited edition Atari product. Wow. Very official Atari. I like that. It's got their little logo on the back. I don't know if you can see that really kind of fine. Anyway really neat that's the certificate of authenticity so let's keep digging here and we have the poster here they were talking about um really neat basically it is of the cover art for the game right you're really careful with this stuff because it's not mine um and then we have the uh guy here for saboteur um it is a nice manual i have to say it does look very kind of genuine for the time. Um, smells brand new. It does say 2022 Atari Interactive. Um, I want to see if there's any misprints in here. I know um, that some people that got AquaVenture, which I'm going to go over um, uh, in one of the two parts coming up after this, um, there were some misprints um, and they had to replace the manual. Uh, so far, I don't see any misprints at all um it looks good to me it does look very kind of authentic to the time i think um we have characters and saboteur factoids uh really neat i want to read that to you so the characters uh yeah i'll, I'll start with the characters i think um well i'll go ahead and read the story to you it says saboteur one player Strange aliens are using the planet Cytonia as a base to build a massive rocket that they intend to shoot into the sun and thereby destroy the galaxy. They thought this, this serene planet would offer no resistance to their insidious schemes. Prove them wrong by jumping into the cybernetic mining robot Hotot. Race through the enemy base and destroy it to eliminate the cosmic threat. 
Saboteur is an extension of the universe first created by Howard Scott Warshaw in the popular Atari 2600 game Yars Revenge. You play as Hotot, a Cytonium mining robot who stumbles across a secret Kotile missile complex hidden deep in the mountains. To save the galaxy, you must prevent the Kotile construction robots from completing construction of their massive rocket and defeat their Kotile master Robert um, robot overseers. Um, awesome. They mentioned the Kotile in there. There was a Kotile in Yara's Revenge as well. So that's kind of the, like I was saying, the same universe. And in this game, you actually see a little uh, Kotile or something like floating by. It's it's interesting. Um, so he did try to merge those two games. Now, um, it does say um, gameplay here. It says, after infiltrating the enemy missile complex, you must first take to the catwalks high above the launch site and disrupt the construction of the rocket. Then you must sabotage the construction of the warhead on the warhead factory. Finally, if you fail to prevent the construction of the warhead, you must destroy it in the warhead battle before it detonates. Launch site. The catwalks are a multi-level playing field across which Kotile construction robots and their Yarian, Yarian slaves shuttle parts to build their rocket. Every time a Kotile or Yarian reaches the right side of the catwalk, the rocket will rise one level higher. If the rocket reaches the top level of the catwalk, it will launch. To prevent this, you must shoot them as they attempt to cross to the rocket with the parts. Watch out for your allies, the Gorfons. This Cytonian race of yellow bird-like creatures will dash across the catwalk and steal pieces from the rocket. At the top of the catwalk, a solitary master robot will fire at you and the brave Gorfons. You can take it out temporarily with a single shot from your blaster, but it will reappear within a few seconds. If you shoot enough construction laborers to prevent completion of the rocket, you can sneak into the warhead factory undetected. However, if you fail to prevent the rocket construction, the factory defenses will be on high alert when you enter. It says here, Warhead Factory. The Warhead Factory features a conveyor belt that carries the warhead components. The factory is protected by a master robot who will try to defeat you by launching security drones that will destroy you upon contact, or by electrocuting you with its photophasic defense shield. To succeed, you must destroy the warhead components before the clock at the bottom of the screen runs out. But you cannot shoot at them directly because they are also protected by defensive shielding. The only way to penetrate the conveyor belt's shield is to fire laser blasts directly at the master robot. A successful strike will bounce off the master robot, travel straight down, and penetrate the shield. You have to time your shots just right to catch a warhead component on the belt as it passes. If you destroy all the components before the clock hits zero, the warhead will self-destruct, and you will save the galaxy. If you succeed, you will score bonus points for every second left on the timer. But if you fail to destroy the pieces fast enough, you will be forced to proceed to one last desperate battle. Uh, there's a warhead battle. This is your last chance to thwart the Kotiles. In this final battle, you must shoot the actual warhead. If you can avoid the warhead's built-in defenses, you can destroy it with a single shot fail and all is lost. Each time you successfully destroy a warhead, or if it escapes, you are returned to the launch site and the gameplay progression will repeat at a higher level of difficulty. Enemies will move faster, shoot more quickly and more accurately, and their laser blasts will ricochet off the bottom of the screen. Laser blasts will also come at you from the sides on the catwalk. You begin the game with six lives and earn a bonus life every 10,000 points. Um, your goal is to progress as far as you can and build up your score until you are out of lives. Um, and we have scoring here, difficulty settings and controls. Um, really neat. Okay, it does talk about characters. Uh, the Gorfons, the uh, Yarian Flies, the Kotile Construction Robots, and Kotile Master Robots. Uh, really neat. Um, it says the Gorfons are allied natives of... Cytonia. Protect them from the master robot. Yarian flies. Sadly, the Yarians have been enslaved by the Kotile and must be eliminated. Kotile construction robots. Industrious enemies. Destroy them as quickly as you can. Kotile master robots. These deadly robotic overseers will defend the rocket site with every last line of code in their programming. So there are some factoids here I want to read you to. Saboteur was completed but not commercially released. 
Uh, Saboteur was developed as a prototype by Howard Scott Warshaw, a programmer, and Jerome Domerot, graphics, and at one point was being considered for an adaptation of a game featuring the A-Team. Saboteur's a part of the greater Yarniverse. Howard Scott Warshaw hinted at his vision for the Yarniverse in a recent interview with Atari. He shared that the characters in the game are full of hidden motivations and not everything is as it seems. Until Warshaw reveals more, here's everything we know or think we know about Saboteur's role in the Yarniverse. The Yar Civilization is under threat. From the Yar's Revenge comic book, we know that the Yar species lived on three planets. Three, four, and five. Planet four was destroyed by the Kotile. The map at the back of the comic indicates that the Yar and Yar's Revenge is leaving Planet 3 to destroy a Kotile enemy camp. Once there, the Yar discovers Yar comrades from Planet 3 working as prisoners on their rocket launch site. How did these Yars end up as prisoners? Has Planet 3 fallen? The Kotile want revenge. In the Saboteur user manual, elders from Cytonia explained that the Kotile survived a supernova centuries ago and had left their galaxy in order to rebuild their community. The Kotile blamed the Cytonians, who shielded them themselves from the blast, and vowed to return for revenge. However, Warshaw hints that the Kotile may actually have other interests in the galaxy and more complicated motivations than just vengeance. Knowing that the Yarniverse is full of secret motives and agendas, quote unquote, it's hard to say if we can trust the Cytonians' version of history. Hotot might not be a robot. In Yar's Revenge, the player is an unnamed Yar, giving the clever impression that each playthrough is done by a different Yar that is part of a larger force. Hotot and Saboteur has a distinctive, sorry, has a distinct personality and, if you're able, defeats the Kotiles, at least for the time being. Does Warshaw have more plans for Hotot in the future? Warshaw shared that the hero and Saboteur is actually a human on a critical species saving mission. Is Hotot a human? Is he part human? Is he being controlled by a human? These are all questions that we hope Howard Warshaw can answer in future projects. But for now, the Yarniverse lore remains a mystery. Um, neat. And there's even a little interview back here with Howard Scott Warshaw, which is really neat. Um, and I'll go ahead and read that to you. It's not very long. And that's it. And then we'll do some gameplay, okay? Uh, it says, uh, Legendary game designer Howard Scott Warshaw discusses Saboteur. Question, what's up with the Yar and Saboteur? Howard Scott Warshaw said. That's a good question. Perhaps a better question is, what's the Yar up to in Saboteur? You will note that the Yar contributes to the building of the rocket transport, but it is not clear what exactly that Yar is contributing. Remember this, you can take the Yar out of Saboteur, but you cannot take the Saboteur out of Yar. Question, the hero in Saboteur is a heroic mining robot hailing from Cytonia. What are his origins? Howard says, The identity of a Cytonian mining robot is part of an elaborate cover story. The same could be said for the explanation of other activities in Saboteur. So far, very little has been revealed about the true purpose of this manufacturing facility. I can't tell you everything right now, but suffice it to say that the hero in Saboteur is actually a human being on a species-critical mission. Question: The Yar's Revenge comic book explains that Yar is descended from the common house fly on Earth who were transformed into magnificent sentient creatures through some sort of accident. Can you tell us what happened? Howard said. I could tell you what happened, but we don't have enough pages here. I can tell you that the transformation from housefly to Yar was an evolutionary process over hundreds of years. But fear not, the entire story of the Yarniverse, of which the Yar's revenge scenario is but a morsel, will be coming soon. Question. The villain in both Yars revenge and saboteur is the Kotile. Why are they so mad? You, Howard says, you wacky humans, you think just because someone kills you they must be angry. And you mad at the ants you step on while hiking? Or sorry, are you mad at the ants you step on while hiking? Or is it just an unfortunate consequence of a chance interaction? Also, I would question your assumptions about the role of Kotiles and saboteur. The Yarniverse is full of secret motives and agendas. Uh, question, why do you think Yar's Revenge was such a popular title on the Atari 2600? 
Howard says, I believe there are several reasons. Yar's Revenge is a stimulating, multi-sensual experience. That was one of my chief design goals. Also, Yars does two things gamers love to do. Establish interesting new rules and break pre-existing limiting rules. I suspect Yars Revenge appeals to the Rebel and all of us. For a full take on Yars Revenge, my Atari experience, and much more, please check out my book, Once Upon Atari, How I Made History by Killing an Industry. That's a great book, by the way. I highly recommend it. It's so good. It's also an audio book, I hear. So. But I just have the book. It's, I read it twice. It's great. Uh, question. Considering Yars Revenge was such a popular game on the Atari 2600, have you ever thought about revisiting this universe? Uh, and this is the last one here. Uh, Howard says, Have I thought about revisiting this universe? Yes, but only for about three decades. Of course, I call it the yar universe. I believe lots more entertainment will be coming from this world. In fact, precious few people realize just how deeply Saboteur is already stitched into the yar universe. Remember, the Hotot identity is just a cover story. Soon we will begin the epic journey into the perceptual vortex that is the entire yar universe. To learn more about Howard's work in the video game industry, check out his book, Once Upon Atari. Very neat. And it's got a note section in the back, just like the old uh, manuals had, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it talks about always turn console power switch off when inserting or removing an Atari game program cartridge. This will protect the electronic components and prolong the life of your Atari video game computer system game. 2022. Um, so that is very cool. That's a really cool manual. I love it. Um, and we got one last thing in here. We have the enamel pen. This is so neat. Basically, it's the, um, you know, it's, it's Saboteur with the with the uh, main character there, you, it's the humanoid. Uh, really neat, I love it. Um, so yeah, uh, this is awesome guys, I freaking love this. Uh, now I do know that this sold, like I said, for like 150, or like, like 149.99, uh, which is a lot, and I definitely couldn't afford it. But um, this is such a cool set. It is, it is like a piece of art, I have to say. It is like a piece of art, and I think they did a great job here. Um, I didn't see any misspellings or anything in there, so uh, just checking. Uh, but yeah, I really love this. And this cart, I cannot wait to put this in. Um, I might try to put it in my Retron, I'm not sure, because uh, I can record off it better. But let's go play some gameplay, and uh, let me know what you think about that. Here we go.
Awesome guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so what do I think about Saboteur, the first Atari XP limited edition cartridge uh, for this unreleased game? Uh, I think it's fantastic, I really do. Um, I think this is a great product for Atari fans, such as myself and maybe you. Um, yeah, it's really great. Um, I really don't have any complaints about this. The only thing, I wish this was like a hard case because it's like, you know, cardboard or whatever. Um, it is glossy, but I wish it was just a little more substantial, but, um, I mean, it's, that's the only complaint. I mean, this, it's amazing. The custom art on this is fantastic. The light up marquee, as you saw, is pretty cool. Let me know what you think, you guys. Um, I'm excited to be talking about this right now. Um, Saboteur for the Atari 2600, the XP cartridge. So next time we're going to be taking a look at the second game in the series, and that would be... Aqua Venture, uh, which is another awesome game that I love. Um, it's fantastic. So come on back next Friday uh, for BCB, and we'll do part two of three, and we'll get into Aqua Venture. And then after that, Yars Return. Thank you so much for watching BCB. Subscribe, like, and comment if uh, if you would like. I'll 
I appreciate everyone watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. There's much more Atari goodness to come, as you well know. All right. Have a good one, you guys. We'll see you next time. Go be a good person. Get your Java. And go play some Atari. We'll see you guys later. Bye now. You are, you are watching, watching. Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.